the Hebrew word for grief and sorrow is, uh, it doesn't mean, uh, grief and sorrow, sorry, means, specifically means physical, uh, physical affliction. Grief and sorrow means specific physical affliction. Now, you can take that in the spiritual sorrow of heart, but it also means an actual spiritual affliction. Sorry, physical af affliction. Then, it says that the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we were healed. Go with me to Romans 3.21. Romans 3.21. We just want to look at a, a few scriptures here. Yeah. <clears throat> Now you say, Pastor, I haven't done any, everything right. I, I, you're telling me that Jesus has paid all these prices and I've got these stepping stones to victory and that my physical healing is taken care of and you're, you're telling us about pleading the blood and, and standing on the word, but I don't feel righteous. I don't feel holy. I don't feel like I should be allowed to. You know, that's kind of like when your car goes over the oil change and you say, is it warranty approved? And they say, yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. We got you covered. It's not about how you feel. You step over into it and receive it. And I'm not trying to take away from the word and keep it simple like an oil change. I'm trying to show you that it's not about what you do. It's what Jesus has done. And so let's look here. Uh, verse 21. It says, but now the righteousness of God apart from the law, is revealed, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. The word there, revealed, means manifest. That even the righteousness of God, through faith in Jesus, to all and all who believe, for there is no difference. <coughs> for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But we, being justified freely by His grace, through the redemption that is in Christ. That we, being justified, we, being justified, Sometimes your feelings will say, you don't deserve it. You didn't read enough this week. You didn't pray on the phone enough with people. You didn't pray all the way to work like you said. You didn't do a lot of things that you said, but you want to know what here? God says, being justified freely, which means it's not about what you did. Amen. It's what Jesus has done. So sometimes you've got to lean right back into the everlasting arms of God and say, Lord, it's not by might nor by power, but by your spirit. I thank you, Lord, for that. Whom God has set forth, verse 25, as a propitiation for our sins, that through his blood, through faith, you've got to receive his blood, through faith. Amen. When you're pleading the blood of Christ, your mind will be going, it didn't work, it didn't work, it didn't work, it didn't work, it didn't work. Come on, let's be honest. When Ann told us about her grandbaby, how, how, how heavy was she at birth again? One pound, 11 ounces. Now, let's just be honest. I can remember standing here praying, going, I don't have a clue how that baby's going to live. I can admit that. Now, my mind may say that, but it didn't mean my mouth or my heart said that. My mind might be thinking that. But my mouth was saying, Lord, I thank you that you can take this. I thank you that you can do this. I thank you you can do this. Mm -hmm. So, you you know, the, who was it? Maybe it was Brother Hagen or Schombach who used to say, doubt your doubts. Your doubts can be in your head, but don't freak out about that. You know, just like when Jim was talking about, okay, we're going to move, praise the Lord, the Lord's provided, but then there's this. There's always the this that the enemy's going to bring up and say, ah, but what about that? Yeah. You just begin to say, you know what, just be quiet. Doubt your doubts. Say, you know what, shut up. You know, maybe you need to start saying shut up to the devil. Don't say shut up to your partner. But say, shut up to the devil. Say, you know what, you're not, you're not doing that. You're not talking like that. I bind you, you know. Um. And uh, seriously, and just take authority over those things to say, you head, shut up. Mind, you just be quiet in the name of Jesus. And, and say, because you can be pleading the blood over something and say, uh, we really need a miracle here. And your head could be screaming something totally different. Totally different. The minute Sandra brings up Jervinsky Cancer Center, I'm, I'm, I'm sure I'm not the only one. You hear that, suddenly it's like, oh, that's the word that people don't even like to say. But we've got a whole list here, of people that were healed and set free from cancer. Mm -hmm. But the problem is, the list doesn't take over our mind right away. The enemy tries to creep in and go, ah, but we've got to begin to say, wait a minute, the word says, the word says it was freely given to us through the blood, by faith. So when you're pleading the blood of Christ, just to talk a little bit about that prayer, 
When you're pleading the blood of Christ, you're taking away from what you've done and using it as what Jesus has done. Right? Think of the court of the law. And just and the judge says, what do you plead? And everyone in the crowd wants to say, guilty, guilty, guilty. And you say, I'm pleading the blood of Christ. And you may be guilty, but we know that the chastisement is of our peace. The guilt was taken to the cross. And so now we get to say, I'm pleading the blood. And because I'm pleading the blood of the Lamb, God, when he looks at you, Jesus is standing in front of you like this. And when God looks at you, he sees his son that laid down his life, that paid the price for whatever it is that you need, and now that sacrifice has been made for you so that you can say, then based on that, the stepping stone to your victory is, God said in his word that I don't have to live in grief and sorrow. Mm -hmm. God said in his word that I don't have to feel rejected. God said in his word I don't have to feel sickness and pain. God said in his word I, I can have my needs abundantly supplied. God said in his word that healing is, is, is God's calling card. God said in his word that by Jesus' stripes we were healed. Therefore, if we were healed, we are healed. Yeah. Amen? Amen. Yeah. We need to do that with a, um, you know, a broken relationship and just begin to call it and say, I'm pleading the blood over that relationship. I just sense that maybe somebody needs to know that today. Just start pleading the blood over that and say, Lord, in the name of Jesus, I thank you that that relationship is healed. I just thank you, Lord, that that relationship is healed. Satan, you get your hands off it. You just take authority over that in the name of Jesus and say, that relationship is healed in the name of Jesus. And you know what? Your head's still going to doubt. But just begin to doubt your doubts. Amen? And begin to speak to those fears and say, not today. Not today. I'm pleading the blood of Jesus. When you're driving down the road, instead of getting fearful, going, oh my, how am I going to get through the Christmas season? You say, Lord, I think you can give me a spirit of joy and a spirit of victory. I thank you, Lord, you can give me a spirit of comfort because you're the God of all comfort. Whatever it is that you need, declare that. But your head might still stay yakking. Just doubt your doubts. Amen? Amen.